Hey, I'm Alan Brito, I'm an architect, and today I have a tutorial for people trying to migrate from SketchUp to Blender, and it's about components. Can we migrate our components uh, workflow from SketchUp to Blender? Short answer is yes. Uh, you can create your, you can use something that looks like components in Blender, but of course with a different name and different workflow. To show you the exact process or the main uh, uh, workflow. I have a simple example here with this SketchUp model. I already selected and set this fence here from this project and I will turn this into a component. If you are new to SketchUp or if you've never used SketchUp before, to create a component, a, a component one of the many ways is to select what you need here and right click and choose make component. When you do this, you will uh, be prompted to name this component. Let's call this fence. And I will set, I will hit the create button here. And as you will notice, it will appear here on the side on your components panel. You will see the name right here. And since we have a component now, you can easily add instances of this component here on your scene. And one of the cool things about components here in SketchUp is that uh, if you right click and choose to edit your component, everything now will behave as if they were instances or connected instances from your, from your uh, main component. For instance, if I apply a scale to one of the components, it will replicate to all other components. And another cool thing that we can do here with components in SketchUp, let me close this edit process, is that you can right click here and you can choose to save this out to device. For instance, if I want to create a unique uh, SketchUp file from this component, you can export this to, the, uh, to Trimble Connect or to the 3D warehouse. Now, how can we replicate something like this in Blender? So let's move to Blender and I will explain step by step what you have to do to create something that looks like components from SketchUp. And here we are in Blender. As you can see, I have the exact same model that I was using in SketchUp. And in case you want to know how I brought this model to Blender, I will try to leave a card here with a link for one of my latest tutorials where I explain how you can uh, install and use this free add-on here that will give you a way to import SketchUp files directly. Now let's get back into trying to create something that behaves or looks like a component. Now a quick note here, Blender do not have uh, anything that works exactly like a component. We will try to get as close as possible and in Blender, or uh, in Blender terminology, uh, we, we will create something called an asset. And this asset, we'll get, we can add it into a library and it will be easy to reuse. So this is the closest that we have uh, in Blender to a component from SketchUp. And I will create a component or here or an asset for this fence. The same thing that we did in SketchUp. So let me show you the process step by step how I will set or how I will, I will create this asset. The first thing that I have to do here is to separate this object because when I imported this model from SketchUp, you will see that uh, it cr uh, created a single entity, a single object. Everything here is a single object. So if you want to separate and manage each one of the objects uh, as an individual entity, you have to separate them. And in Blender, to separate mesh objects, uh, we'll be using the separate option. Let me just see where it is here under the menu. It's right here under the mesh, separate option, and you can also use the P key. So I will select just that fence to make it easier, I will set my view to the top, change to wireframe, your, sh uh, your, your shading to wireframe, and I will try to select just this entity here, which is the fence, press the P key, and choose 
selection. This is what I want to separate. And as you can notice here, if I go back into shading mode and I try to select the fence, you can now select just the fence object. And the next step to create an asset is to go here on your outliner. And you can rename this with a double click. You can also use the F2 key. Let me call this fence. And uh, in SketchUp, when you select an object that you want to create or you want to turn into a component, you will right click and choose Make Component. Here in Blender, you will right click the, uh, the object name and you will choose this option Mark as Asset. You will see that the Blender will add a small stack of books here on the left, uh, on the left of the object name. This means it's an asset you can add it into a library. How can we make copies of this object into our scene? That's easy. You can click here on your object name and drop it here on your scene. This is one way. Uh, by the way, you are not really making an instance from your, from your object. You will see that if you try to edit this fence object here if i uh, use the tab key to go into edit mode try to change the scale it will not update your object but if you want to make connected copies in blender we have this mode if i right click here you will see that we have this option called duplicate linked you can use the alt d key if I press Alt D and try to make a copy here, if I try to make changes to this object, it will now replicate those copies. Now, this is an asset. How can I uh, reuse? Uh, one of the advantages of using an asset is that you can uh, reuse this into another project. To reuse it, you have to save into a special folder. In Blender, you can set uh, this uh, library folder to reuse those assets in the Edit Preferences. And you choose here on your File Paths, you will see this option here called Asset Libraries. You can see that I have two folders here. One is User Library, which is this folder right here. And I have another folder here, which is this location my f drive a folder called assets you can add more folders here so the uh, the way to use this folder is quite simple i just have to save this file from blender in that particular folder and to save this file there you just have to go into the file save as and i have that folder right here as you can see and I will save it there with this name. And that's it. Now, to use this fence object again, or to reuse this asset, you have to let's create a new file, file new. And right here, I will change this editor into a special type of editor called Asset Browser. When you choose the Asset Browser, you will be able to, uh, to change your libraries here. And you will see that we have one particular uh, library here called Assets. If I choose Assets, you will see that we have the fence there because this is uh, one of the assets that it's inside one of the Blender files in that library. And to create a copy of this asset, you just have to click and drag it into the scene. And there we have it. I'm reusing that fence into another project. Uh, I also have this chair here that it's on another Blender file. I can just right click, uh, click and drag it into the scene. And I will be making copies of this asset as well. 
and this is it. Uh, you now know how to use assets in Blender when comparing it uh, with uh, SketchUp components. There are many other different ways that we can uh, handle this. You can use a pen, you can use link, you can use uh, connected libraries, you can use add-ons uh, to improve this experience. What about you? Do you have any other tips? Please share with us in the comment section. And if you want to keep learning more about how to migrate to Blender coming from SketchUp, I will uh, leave links in the description for one of my uh, latest workshops. It's this one right here, where I explain how to use Blender as a CAD tool. Uh, links in the description, it will, uh, it will support my work here in Blender 3D Architect. And I will also leave links to my uh, to two of my latest books. This one right here, where I explain 3D modeling with Blender, focusing on focusing on uh, add-ons, and this other book here, where I explain step by step for beginners how to use Blender as a CAD tool. It's the same content from the workshop, but. Uh, in a book format. When you visit this site, you can download sample pages from each one of the books. You can download the project files that I use and you can take a look into the table of content. So you can, uh, you can see if those uh, books will help you learn Blender. And by the way, uh, most of those books here, I have uh, multiple translations available in at least four different languages, English, Spanish, German, and French. So links in the description, it will support my work here in Blender 3D Architect. I hope you like this tutorial. If you are not subscribed yet, please subscribe so you won't miss any future tutorials. See you next time. Bye.